You're about to enter the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. A record-setting win for the Rebels. UNLV goes on the offensive by air and by ground. The defense swarms the field for one of the best 30 minutes in recent memory. And the adjustments pay off in a big way, leading to the largest comeback in school history. It's time to fire up the fight song. We're breaking down a big W in the Reb Zone, done just the way we like it. This is the Reb Zone Sports Show, only on Fox 5. Good evening, welcome inside the Reb Zone on what we're calling Sunday Fun Day after yeah. UNLV's thrilling come from behind win last night against Central Michigan. Kevin Bollinger alongside head football coach Bobby Houck. And Bobby, congratulations on getting that first one of the year last night. Thanks, Kevin. We're, obviously, we're excited about that. And, and uh, the way we did it was uh, uh, very exciting, uh, maybe too exciting. But uh, it's a good football team we, been, we beat. You and I talking about Central Michigan. They're a team that won their bowl game a year ago. Uh, they've been to a bunch of bowl games in recent years, so they're a good football program, and uh, we're excited about getting the win against them. It was some good stuff. It was certainly a tale of two halves. Let's look at how things developed from start to finish. Let's work tonight. Let's go. Let's go. Let's play hard. Let's do it. Let's play hard. Work on me. Work on you. One, two, three, four. Let's get it. Ah, 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 ah. A fired up and focused Rebels team came out looking to do a 180 on last week's game, but it was another slow start. The offense could not get anything going early, and a change was made at quarterback in the third possession as Nick Sherry was replaced by Caleb Harry. The Rebel defense had to spend a lot of time on the field, and Central Michigan took advantage. On third and 18 from the 50, UNLV was in the right defense, but couldn't get the stop, and Sailor Lavalli picked up the first down to keep the drive alive. Lavalli capped it off, carrying Rebels into the end zone to make it 14-0 Chippewas three minutes into the second quarter. Central Michigan quarterback Cooper Rush was making his first career start, but faced little pressure in the first half and made UNLV pay. This 20-yard TD pass to Titus Davis made it 21-0 with seven minutes before the half, and the Rebels were looking for a spark. That spark came from the offense and through the air. Herring by some time, moving to his right, and he's one downfield to Devontae Davis for a 50-yard gain to set the Rebels up on the 25. The two hook up again. The lob pass from Herring to the back corner of the end zone, and Davis brings it down. UNLV was on the board, down 21-7 at the half, but the momentum was swinging back in their direction. Besides the fact that you were down only 14 instead of 21, how important was it to get that late touchdown for the mindset of your team as you went into the halftime locker room? Well, not, not just the mindset, but just narrowing the gap between the two teams. You know, we, we couldn't get anything going on, on the offensive side of the ball. We were... Uh, a step slow or a step behind on defense for whatever reason. Uh, you know, I thought we had a, a decent plan. We had the right calls, as you mentioned in the in the in the recap of that. But uh, we went in the locker room down two touchdowns, getting the ball coming out of the locker room. So we got ourselves back in the game. So that was a big drive for us and, and uh, a huge deal in terms of winning the game. You decided to make the quarterback switch after the second possession. I believe the offense only took five snaps before you made the change. What did you guys see that you thought that Caleb Herring was going to give you a better chance? Well, a couple things. One, during the week, both guys practiced well, so it was our intention to play both quarterbacks. Uh, we had talked about third series or first series of the second quarter uh, to get Caleb in the game, and uh, we felt like uh, Nick wasn't sharp and had missed a couple of things in those five plays, so we made the switch there, and, and obviously Caleb came in and did a fine job. Well, it led to a totally different story in the second yeah, half of this game, especially uh, from the first 20 minutes of the game on. The Rebels went out. They set the tone early and often for total domination. One, two, three. Wait. Let's go. The Rebels sent a message right out of the gate in the second half, driving 80 yards in 12 plays in 4 minutes and 50 seconds. The offense converted on key third downs, first on this nice catch and run by Jake Phillips on third and 11, then this herring toss to Jerry Rice Jr. 
Senior running back Tim Cornett did the rest, breaking a tackle and rumbling into the end zone from 12 yards out. The deficit was cut to seven, the fans were back in the game, and the energy on the field was electric. Let's go, D. The defense got its mojo back as well, continually putting pressure on the Chippewas and giving up nothing. Winning the battle for field position, the offense jumped on their chances. Herring went deep again to his favorite target, and Devontae Davis made this incredible catch for a 42-yard score to tie the game up at 21. UNLV headed to the fourth with everything clicking. After a Nolan Cohorse 34-yard field goal gave the Rebels the lead, the defense's harassment of Cooper Rush paid off. With the Chippewas driving, Penny Vea gets the pick at the six-yard line. With a three-point lead and 11-16 left in the game, Herring drove the offense down the field in a well-executed 13-play, 94-yard drive. Ending with another circus catch by Davis in the end zone, getting his foot down for the touchdown. UNLV scored 31 unanswered points to take a 10-point lead with six and a half minutes left. Let's go, Rebels! Let's go! The defense made sure any ideas Central Michigan had on a comeback were dashed quickly, swarming on everything and getting yet another turnover. This interception by senior Frank Crawford shut the door. A historic comeback by the Rebels, the largest in school history, erasing a 21-point hole and winning in impressive fashion, 31 to 21. That was fun to see after the game. Good to see our guys having some fun after the game, and uh, hopefully we get to do that again here real soon. You could feel and see the yeah. energy shift on the sideline as the second half kind of worked its way through, especially after that opening drive. The players started believing they knew that they could wear, wear Central Michigan down. They did. I mean, they were confident coming out of the locker room. As you mentioned, the score before the half helped us a little bit with that, and then we, we got the nice scoring drive uh, to go down and make it a, a seven-point game. And, you know, we've got, we, we've got some ability to do some things. We made plays the second half that we weren't making in the first half, and it just really kind of built upon itself. We, we reeled off 31 unanswered points. There were great plays on defense, great plays in the kicking game, and great plays on offense. And, boy, did Devontae Davis have him a night or what? He really <laughs> did. Was something. It was a nice hookup, and, and Herring was impressive. A lot of those throws did go to Devontae Davis. Herring ends up 24 of 28 for 266 yards, three touchdowns, and no picks and managed the game very well. He did, he did a good job with things, made great decisions, uh, took the, the easy throws when they were there, um, took the shot plays and, and converted them. Uh, again, Devontae Davis making some of those plays uh, uh, really that were their difficult catches. And then uh, the defense showed up, we tackled well, we were physical and, and uh, got a couple of big turnovers. One more thing about the offense before we move to the defense. You went downfield a little bit more than we saw in the first two games in terms of, of throwing downfield. Was that by design for something that you saw, or was it just because of the circumstances of, of trying uh, to come back? It was more about their structure. Uh, they were putting the pressure on their corners, and, and you have to be able to take your shots at that sometimes. Uh, early in the game, we had a couple of opportunities, but we just weren't getting enough plays in the first half. And so the second half allowed us to uh, we converted some third downs and got some new, new series and were able to take some shots at them. Defensively, the pressure on the quarterback really changed the dynamic of what they were able to do. They weren't getting a whole lot of, of pressure in the first part of the first half, but certainly things changed midway through the second quarter and the second half was just a, a domination up front. Yeah, that's right. Our, our defensive line played well and, and if you're going to play good pass defense, your defensive line's got to play well. And, and when we started winning up front, uh, our pass defense got better and better, and, and it showed up with, with some deflections, some overthrows, some balls knocked down on the line of scrimmage, and then the two interceptions. 
We have uh, still a lot more to talk about Good. this game. It's fun to Let's talk about this that. one. Absolutely. The Rebels picking up their first one of the season. Straight ahead, we're going to have reaction from the players after the game, plus more analysis from Coach Houck. And we're also going to look ahead to Saturday's home game against Western Illinois and show you why this game poses a different kind of a test. Stay with us. The Red Zone rolls on in just two minutes. You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. I feel like we just got a resiliency about, about ourselves and we don't want to let nothing hold us down. We knew we were down 21 and we just knew we just had to come back and it was just an obstacle we had to overcome. We talked all week about playing relentless and it showed up in the second half too. The whole team played relentless, all three phases of the game. And to get the win, it can help us rolling into uh, the rest of the week. When you're winning like that and everything's clicking and you're doing things right and executing on and everybody's hitting on all cylinders, there's no other feeling like that. I mean, I mean you know, it, it was fun. And you, you all could see it. We were having a good time out there. To have a comeback win like this means a lot for our team. I mean, from uh, this win right here, we're going to grow and uh, we're just going to keep getting closer and closer. Now, anybody who was down on the field after the game and maybe hung around a little bit, probably hear the celebration going on in the, in the locker room, a little party atmosphere yeah, afterwards. It's good. That's how it's supposed to be. You know, in, in football, like I like to say, there's, we only have 12 games, so everyone's big, everyone's a must win, and, and uh, after that, we put away the, the gear for another seven days. So uh, you got to celebrate them. you got to really, really enjoy the wins because they're hard to get. Winning's really hard. When you come back in the fashion that you did and this team really came together, it looked like, how much does that carry over? Only three games into a 12-game season. How much of a game changer is that for this team moving forward? Well, it's, it's certainly a big deal for us. You know, we were 0-2. We'd lost to Minnesota uh, out of the Big Ten, and then we lost to Arizona out of the Pac-12, and, and uh, we're trying to figure out who we are. And, I, you know, I don't think anybody around the country – has a good feel for who they are themselves for the most part or who anybody else is until you get through September. And uh, so for us, bringing forward into, into next week and the upcoming weeks, getting a big win against a, a team that won their bowl game last year is, is a great thing for us, gives us some confidence and, uh, and gives us some renewed enthusiasm for the upcoming week, you know, rather than a, a sense of uh, uh, desperation around our place trying to get our first win. Now we got a chance to win two in a row and, and maybe get on a little bit of a roll. You know what they say in sports, on to the next one. And up That's next right. for the Rebels is a Saturday 6 p.m. kickoff against Western Illinois. And if you think this FCS opponent is a cakewalk, think again. The Fighting Leathernecks bring some challenges to the table. Western Illinois comes to Las Vegas with a 2-1 record, fresh off a 29-12 loss at Minnesota yesterday in a game that was much closer than the final score indicates, having led late in the third quarter. In three games, the Fighting Leathernecks have a plus 11 turnover ratio, but their defense wore down late against the Gophers, allowing 213 rushing yards. Offensively, Western Illinois likes to run the football and uses two backs, but quarterback Trenton Norvell can be dangerous. He was highly rated out of high school and transferred from Cincinnati. The Rebels on paper will have an edge in nearly every phase of the game, but Western Illinois is no cupcake. UNLV will be tested. Now the one thing that these two teams have in common so far this season is Minnesota. How much does that help in preparation that you're going to be able to see and what, what they did against Minnesota and compare maybe to some of the things you saw in, in Minnesota? Yeah, well, we know the personnel, so we, we've got a pretty good gauge on, on who people are because we've played each other and you know who's better than who at, at different positions. So you can get a little bit of gauge on that. Um, their scheme, uh, was different defensively this past week than it was the first two weeks. So we've got to, uh, we've got to try to figure out how they're going to decide to play us. And then uh, in terms of our defense versus their offense, um, as you could see from some of the clips, their style of offense, uh, similar to Arizona's, which gave us big problems uh, a week ago. So we got our hands full this weekend. We, we, uh, we know that. Uh, they're going to come in here with... Uh, with beating us on their mind and, and be confident that they can do that. And we need to take, what, take, that, take that hope away as the game wears on on Saturday. They've been running the ball a lot more than passing it in their first three games, but they also have a quarterback who had to sit out a year after the transfer. So as he gets more comfortable, that may open their playbook up in terms of, of more passing. So I'm sure you probably don't expect them to just try and pound it. Well, it, it certainly will. And, and uh, 
you know, my only experience against Western Illinois was numerous years ago, so there's really not any carryover personnel-wise or anything like that. But uh, that day they had a quarterback named Russ Mickna who ended up playing for the Rams. So they've got guys on their team. As you mentioned, they'll have some good players, and uh, we need to match up and have our A game if we want to get our second win in a row. Should be a good one. Six o'clock kickoff over at Sam Boyd Stadium. Now straight ahead, we're going to look at a couple of different things when you go out to Sam Boyd Stadium that makes going to the game a whole lot easier and definitely a whole lot more fun. From getting there without driving to the tailgate experience, we're going to give you some tips on how to make your next trip to the game more enjoyable. You're watching the Reb Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Go Rebel. There you go. For fans, tailgate parties are as much a part of college football as anything else. Every week across the country, the festivities begin hours early in the parking lot. And at UNLV, it's no different. Over at Sam Boyd Stadium, the parties range from simple to extravagant, but they all include the same variables. Good food, some drinks, and fellow fans to make going to the game an all-day outing. I've been to tailgates at other colleges. It's fun. You just go out there three, four hours early. You eat, drink, have fun with your friends, just have a really good time. Sam Boyd has a grass lot that costs money to get in, but there is a dirt lot that is free on the south side of the stadium. The fact that UNLV plays their home games off campus, that's been a point of contention for a long time. But for students, there is a way to get out to Sam Boyd cheap and safe to cheer on the Rebels without the hassle of driving. Every week, buses load up students at the new transit center to get them to the stadium and then drop them off after the game. Last night, Interim Athletic Director Tina Kunzer murphy jumped on board. I think it's just easy access for the students, and it's really a safe alternative to driving out there. This is a good way to like, or, you can just park at UNLV and then ride the bus over there. So yeah, it's and it's really convenient. Too. Oh, yeah. So much gas to drive out there. Mm -hmm. And you're with all your friends, <laughs> yeah. so it's perfect. The bus ride will cost you two bucks each way, but certainly worth it to get out there and kick back a little bit. You don't have to worry about any of the traffic or anything. Let's talk a little bit about the fan impact on the game. And I know you don't hey, get to see any of this that, stuff that before, right? That stuff looks pretty, like a pretty good deal. Swing by once in a <laughs> while, right? You got your hands full. I'm telling you, the, the day I get done coaching, I'm, I'm going to be a pro tailgater. You've never probably been to a tailgate not, party, not have you? much of that. It's, it's unfortunate. It looks like fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it does add to the atmosphere. And, of course, you want fans to be ready to go when they walk in that stadium for kickoff because – they can have an impact in the game. We see it at other stadiums that are packed with how much of an impact they can have. Yeah, our guys enjoy it. You know, every, everybody likes playing in front of a, a, a full, loud stadium, and, and our people are great. And, and uh, again, we're going to try to do our part and win some games, get some more people out there. But those loyal folks that have been coming to our games, we, uh, we love them to death. You don't have any control over where you guys play, obviously, in terms of being on campus or off campus. But having a student section and student involvement with this team is as important as anything else because that carries over during the week with the players on campus. Well, it does. And our, our students are great. I mean, they, they support and they go. And, uh, you know, the, good, the great thing about Sam Boyd, and we, we can go for hours about it being out there away from campus versus an on-campus stadium, which hopefully someday will happen. But uh, there's not a bad seat in that stadium. It's a great place to watch a game. And frankly, over the last two years, uh, with the exception of the Arizona game this year and the New Mexico game, which we won in a blowout last year, they've been great, great, exciting college football games. So hope people will come out and watch. It's a lot of fun. We are not done talking about last week and looking ahead. We've got some final thoughts straight ahead. But first, here's how other teams in the Mountain West Conference did on Saturday.
You're watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. So the Rebels get their first win of the season against Central Michigan last night. They come away from this game injury free. As we move forward to next week, of course, the quarterback position always has the spotlight. Caleb Herring was outstanding last night. Is he the guy as you move in to, to practice and, and get ready for Western Illinois? Well, he did a nice job last night, and, and uh, congratulations to him. It was good for his football team, and, and we're excited for Caleb. We're, we're going to dig into it. We'll meet on it. Uh, I think both Caleb and Nick Sherry are a little bit better when they're competing for the job, so we'll probably let them compete, and, and odds are we'll play both of them next, week, next weekend again. It's probably an overused term by analysts, but is there any fear of a look-ahead game with the conference schedule beginning the following week and you, and you have an opponent uh, yeah, coming in this week? I, I can't imagine. I mean, I, we, we are trying to get this program going. We haven't won a lot, which is an obvious uh, understatement, but uh, I can't imagine we would ever overlook anybody. It doesn't matter. I mean, we, we got to be geared up and play our best to beat anybody, and, and I hope that's what goes on next weekend. Well, we had some fun tonight. Let's do it again yeah. next week. Yeah, these Sundays are a little better. I don't want you. To, you don't need to cheer me up on Sunday anymore. So it's good. We plan on doing it again next Sunday. We hope you do as well. Kickoff 6 p.m. on Saturday night at Sam Boyd Stadium. We hope you come out and join the team and cheer them on. And of course, you want to join us on Sunday as we break it all down and look ahead to the start of the Mountain West Conference season. Thanks for joining us inside the Reb Zone. We leave you with some of the Rebel Football Plays of the Week. Good night.